what made you want to pull the trigger on politics? It's just it's so demanding, so personal, so chaotic nowadays. And you have a practice and kid, how old are your kids? They are now 11 and 13. Okay, so I, I have babies. So it's like, there's no way I can do something like that. But maybe mm-hmm. does it get more manageable at 11 and 13? Or is it still chaos? <laughs> um, it's still chaos. I think the key to life for everyone, like if you want to be like wow. hardcore about your career is you need a partner at home yeah. who is going to like support you 100% and allow you to like give your energy where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it definitely... I don't know. I enjoy having my kids at the age they're at. It's pretty fun. Like this Friday, I've got a parade and my daughter can't do the parade with me because she's doing another part of the parade because she's in a production of Newsies with the community theater. So she'll be like in another float. But um, my son, like all of his soccer buddies, they always come to the parades and throw candy for me and wear Feist for House shirts. Um, so it's fun. And like my daughter's, um, whole fifth grade toured the Capitol. And so I got to show her whole class, like where I sit on the house floor. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I, it it has always worked pretty well. It was interesting when I first ran, it was an open seat and there were a lot of people who wanted it because we're in a very, you know, democratic district. So it's a really, really good seat for a Democrat. And so, um, there was, it was really unlikely that I would get it. And, um, my daughter, so I guess she was like nine at the time, um, or eight, she wrote me a letter and she was like, I know you're going to win. Like, you know, you've got this. And I was thinking it would have been a good life lesson for them both. If I lost just to see like how hard I worked and that sometimes it doesn't work out, but you still go for it. But then I won. So I don't know if I'm (laughs) not good life lessons or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amusing. Um, yeah. So yeah, it works to have kids. You just have to have a partner um, who really supports you. And so for for me, my husband was a lobbyist with the ACLU for a while, and he he now has his current job that oversees that role. But um, the seat opened up, and we knew what we were getting into, and we talked about it. And we just we just thought, you know, we have careers that we love, and we find meaningful. We're like we have enough money, um, but we felt like we had more that we wanted to give um, in like service to the community in the state. And so it's like, it's truly like a joint undertaking. Um, and so we made the decision together that I should just go for it. Um, I had always like thought maybe I would run for office or not always, but it was just kind of always kind of in the ether and Ben was really in politics. And so we were just in those circles and, um, I, I just was super angry after being um, an immigration lawyer under the Trump administration for four years. And it just felt, you know, I work in immigration advocacy um, through AILA National, and I'd been doing it since I was paralegal in 2001. And it just felt very futile at that moment. Like, I just felt like I had been working so hard to make like national change. And it just felt like I could do that forever. And it wasn't clear if anything would ever change. And so when the opportunity to do something really concrete at the state level opened up, it felt like the right way to refocus my energy for a time. Um, and we've gotten a ton of immigration bills passed because um, I'm just like, think of mine. <laughs> I mean, I do a lot of juvenile justice and other stuff too, yeah. but like we changed the definition of gross misdemeanor by one day. So now it's never going to be an ag felony. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a bill to create a permanent office of new Americans with $750,000 in funding ongoing forever. Um, I, we, SIJS was getting cut off at 18 because of how Minnesota state courts worked. So I fixed that by creating this weird guardianship thing. Um, and that was bipartisan. Um, we have a U visa bill that I got passed, um, to require law enforcement to respond within a period of time nice. after somebody submits a cert request. Um, so, so yeah, there've been tons of immigration yeah. things we've been able to do. Um, well, obviously we did driver's license for all this year too, which is very exciting. Um, what I love about the U visa thing is like, whenever you talk about immigration reform on federal level, it's this massive bill. And I'm like, oh, it's just going to be a piece of two mileage crap that's going to happen because mm-hmm. immigration is so nuanced. Like only an immigration lawyer would say that those changes that you made, though, adding one day, this and that mm-hmm. just it, to have this non-immigration lawyers do this big bill. Like it's, it's just going to end up messing. There's going to be a huge problem with it. So I'm, I'm kind of mm-hmm. like, I'd rather have these little pieces, but with, it's just not going to happen because it's so nuanced with immigration. But another thing I love is uh, the way you're as a political scientist, um, 
the the part time nature where people from the community could actually live life, have be in the community and do it. It's not a full time like career politician kind of thing. That really makes a difference because you could bring what you know from the community into the practice instead of just being there and only dealing with lobbyists twenty four seven. Is this so? You know, lobbyists part of the game. This is what it is, but. You, you're in the community, so you actually can bring stuff from there. So that model yeah. works really well. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I feel very strongly the same. Like some people say like, oh, if we didn't have a part-time legislature, people could spend more time legislating. Um, and, you know, and we could make more money. Like we definitely don't make money. <laughs> um, but um, to me, like not being a like career politician, I mean, some a lot of people are career politicians at the state level, but I think like allowing people like me who are primarily an immigration attorney to also help craft law and be in the legislature, I think is good for the state of politics in Minnesota. If you could, if, I'd rather have less laws, but finally crafted laws that meet the specific mm-hmm. need like this. And like, you just need people who have expertise to do it because uh, especially immigration, it's just like, no one's going to understand any of that. And yeah. And, you know, I was so disappointed that Margaret Stock didn't get elected to the Senate. That would have yeah. been amazing. <laughs> Alaska is a hard seat, so that's there's a lot of a lot of money there, so it's like it's just a whole thing. Um, yeah.